Good morning or good afternoon. It's Miss Bauer here, and today we're going to talk about congruent triangles and just kind of congruent shapes in general. So, congruent figures are figures that have the same size and the same shape. So, they're the same size and same shape. So I might draw two triangles. So here's one triangle. And there's another triangle. And granted, they might be the same size, but they're not the same shape. So those would not be congruent. Okay, what would be congruent is if I were gonna take one and I were gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this triangle ABC. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it, but I'm gonna call this one X, Y, Z. So A became X, so that means that A and X are what are called the corresponding parts. Now, you've heard of corresponding angles before. Corresponding angles are just the same spot. It's the same thing with corresponding parts. So you can just make a note, same spot. But with congruent shapes, we have to be careful because while B corresponds to Y, I could do this. And I could turn it around. Okay, A still corresponds to X, B is still going to correspond to Y, and C is going to correspond to Z. It doesn't matter how I turn it. Those are the parts that are still going to match up. So I would need to be really, really careful. If I said A, B, A, B would match with X, Y. And if your shapes are congruent, typically you'll see ticks. So notice I went from 1 to 2 to 3. And then sometimes you'll see arcs as well. So like one arc, sometimes two arcs, and three arcs. And everything should match up. So if your triangles are congruent, what you can do is you can write what's called a congruence statement, which is what goes with what. So triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle X, Y, Z. And what's really important with congruent triangles and congruent shapes is to be aware that the order is important. That congruent statement is like a map. It's telling you that A goes with X. So A has to be first and X has to be first. B doesn't go with X. It's A that goes with X. So in a map, or if you're giving directions, order's pretty important, right? You wouldn't tell somebody to like bake cookies in the oven and then add chocolate chips to the dough. That doesn't make any sense. So the order is super, super important. So if we take a look at this first problem, it says write a congruent statement. And remember that that congruent statement is just mapping things. You're just saying which triangle is congruent to which triangle. And there are actually all sorts of congruent statements. So you can be mapping the triangles, but you can also map all of the corresponding parts. And that's what this says. Identify all the pairs of congruent corresponding parts. So first let's start with our statement. So if I were gonna say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, well, this is where I need to be careful because A would go with F and B would go with G. And I could see that by the box in the box and one arc and one arc. Or look between your ticks. So like one tick and two ticks, one tick and two ticks. So A, B, C would go with F, G, H. Now, 
This statement is important because from here I can identify all of the parts. But maybe you didn't want to say triangle ABC. Maybe you wanted to say, you know what, I want to say triangle GHF first. That's fine. You can do that as long as you map it correctly. So what goes with GHF? That would be BCA. And once you have your map, you don't necessarily need your picture anymore. So once you have this congruence statement, it's really easy to identify your corresponding parts. Like if I asked you, what goes with segment AB? Well, AB has two ticks, so it should go with the side that has two ticks. But then you have to ask, is it A, B, G, F, is it F, G? Well, just look at your statement. What goes with A, B, F, G? But this says to identify all pairs. And remember, a triangle has three sides, so let's keep going. What goes with B, C? B, C would be congruent to, notice the second, third, G, H. And the order doesn't quite matter as long as they match. So for the last one, G, H, I did F, G. So if I said, let's do H, F. Well, what goes with H, F? H, F was third first. So that would be C, A. And that's it for the sides. Angles are honestly going to be easier because for angles, you're just matching. So what goes with angle A, what goes with angle B, and what goes with angle C? Well, just match up that order. What goes with angle A? You can look at your picture and see a box with a box or just know that A goes with F and go from there. So A would go with angle F, B would go with angle G, and C would go with angle H. So writing a congruent statement isn't that bad as long as you're being very careful and matching that your order is important. You have some flexibility as long as they match each other. So let's take a look at the next one and it says, are the triangles congruent? How do you know? Write a congruent statement. So I'm going to give you a minute to take a look at this and ask yourself that question. Are the triangles congruent? Feel free to pause the video to take a closer look. So at a first glance, you might be thinking, yes, they're congruent because there's one, two, three, one, two, three ticks, one arc, two arcs, three arcs, one arc, two arcs, three arcs. And remember, they can turn a picture around, but now you need to be careful. So between one tick and two ticks, and so between one tick and two ticks, you should have the same number of arcs. So between those sides, and notice how they're kind of pointing to the angle for you. That's called an included angle. Is that angle that's between those, right? This one has two arcs and this one has one arc. So your arcs aren't quite matching up, which means that although they might have the right number of ticks and arcs, they're not in the same spot. So these triangles are not congruent. And if they're not congruent, then you can't write a congruent statement. So our reason's going to be no, they're not congruent. And you can use that symbol. And if I asked you, how do you know? So you know they're not congruent, but how do you know? You don't have to tell me the ticks and the arcs aren't necessarily in the right spot. So you can just say because of this corresponding parts. Instead of saying the ticks and arcs, just say because the corresponding parts are not congruent. And that's all that you need for an explanation. And then if it asks you to write a congruent statement, which it said if possible, but you can always just say NA. Because they're not congruent, so you can't write a congruent statement. So taking a look at this next one, asking yourself the same question, are these congruent? Are these congruent? So notice I have one tick and one tick, so two, two, three, and three. 
And my arcs match up, right? So like between one and two, there's one arc. Between one and two, there's one arc. Two arcs on the other side. But these angles don't have any markings on them. So some of this is congruent, but you do know that these angles are congruent as well. Sometimes we have what are called freebies, and a freebie is something that you know is always true all of the time, and that's vertical angles. So I can add in arcs, and I'm adding in three arcs because I already have one and two, so I'm just going to increase it to three. This is what I like to call a freebie. You can put arcs there. That's a legally allowed move because vertical angles are always congruent. They're always congruent. So that's what I like to call a freebie. It's something that you're allowed to just go ahead and add in because we know that vertical angles are congruent all of the time. So are these two triangles congruent? Yes. And if I asked you, how do you know? You don't have to say the ticks and the arcs, yada, yada, yada. You can just say, if it's no, because corresponding parts are not congruent. So think of that like our inverse. We're gonna say yes, because corresponding parts are congruent. You can use the congruent symbol if you want. So notice our conditional statements are coming back again, right? It's yes because yes, correct. No because no, not there. So that comes back, which means we can write a congruent statement for this one. So if I said triangle D, E, G, if you match up that order, we'll go with triangle D, E, G. Well, that would be H, E, F. Or maybe you don't want to say D-E-G. Maybe you wanted to say triangle E-H-F. Well, what's congruent to triangle E-H-F? I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. That would be E-D-G. So remember that either answer is correct as long as the orders match. D goes with H and G goes with F. Same thing, E and E, H, D, F, G. They're all matching up. So taking a look at this next one, it says, are these triangles below congruent? And there should be something that you're kind of seeing right off the bat. And hopefully you're catching that there's no ticks. There's no ticks in here. So all that I know are that some of the angles match. So I'm going to show you something. If you're thinking, well, yeah, they're congruent because they look congruent, I'm going to show you something really quick. If I take this and I enlarge it and I make it bigger, angle B is still going to be congruent to angle E. And angle A, look at that angle, is still going to be congruent to angle D. But I don't have any ticks that lock in the sides. The angles are congruent either way. The angles are still congruent either way. But I don't have any ticks that actually lock in my sides. So I don't know if DE is really that far apart or if technically this is just a shrunken down version of it. So are these two triangles congruent? No. And there's no ticks. So your reason would be because there's not enough information. I need ticks or something else to know if they're really congruent. And that's what we're going to get into in some later days is what are the markings that you need to show that they're congruent? Like what's the minimum that you need to see? How are you going to know for sure if the triangles are congruent with the minimum amount of markings? But for now, all I have is two angles. That's not going to do anything. Now, there is one more thing that we do know here, and there's a freebie in here. And our freebie in here is that if you know two angles, you actually know that the third is congruent as well. So think about that. I'm gonna make up numbers. If B is 100, then E has to be 100, because they both have one arc. So then if D is 20, well then A has to be 20. So then 100 plus 20 is 120, subtract from 180, that means C has to be 60, but it'd be the same process over here. 
it doesn't matter how we change the numbers. If I said that this number right here is 70, then E has to be 70. If I said that A is 50, well then D would have to be 50. So then either way that you do it, you're gonna get that this other angle, not 80, my bad y'all. So 70 and 50 would be 120, that would be 60. I don't know where I was getting 80 from. And that's called two angles theorem. So that's another freebie. Two angles theorem. And it has a quite long definition, but we're just gonna abbreviate it down to this. If you know two angles, you know the third. So if you know two angles are congruent, then the third is congruent. And that's because of what we just did. If two angles are matching, well, I can find the third and then the third would be the same for either one. So what we're gonna get into now is how do you solve? If you know that your triangles are congruent or you have enough markings, how would you solve? So just taking a look at this next one, if you see one arc and I see that angle R is 120, angle V also has to be 120 because of the congruent arcs are matching. And then if this is 20, well then this side right here would be 20 degrees. And I know that because of all the arcs on my picture. And then the more information that I know, this helps me solve. So as we're solving, which we're gonna get into in the next video, always ask yourself, is there anything that matches? Is there anything that you can copy and paste from triangle to triangle and go from there? So we'll pick up in the next one.